morning someone had requested that I do a video on how I can pinto beans so I've got my jars there's too much water in the pot but I'll get that out in a minute I've got my jars washed and in my pressure canner just waiting right now in the sink I boiled my beans for about two minutes. I'm going to let them soak for an hour. Steaming. I'm going to let them soak for an hour and then I'll drain them, put fresh water in them, and bring them to a boil and boil them for 30 minutes. Okay, the beans have finished soaking. They soaked for an hour. So I'm draining them through this colander. I'm just ladling them out. And then I poured the rest of them after I got the first one out, the first parts out. <clears throat> poured the rest of them through that colander and here's the remainder of them in the pan with which I'm going to fill back up with water and boil them for 30 minutes okay I've got the beans have been drained from the first soak now I've got them in water I put a lot of water in because um, I'm going to need it for canning you can use this water for canning you don't have to put fresh water in the, the jars. I'll link you to the uh, instructions. I'll link them down below in the show more box. Um, the instructions for how to safely can pinto beans. Okay, as I get ready to can the beans, they haven't, I'm waiting for them to come to a boil and boil them, but I wanted to show you. I've got my salt. I'll put one teaspoon of salt per quart. Teaspoon measuring spoon. Chopstick to debubble, uh, the jar tongs to pick up the hot jars, the canning funnel, a cloth soaked, in, I mean a paper towel soaked in uh, vinegar, and a little bowl to set my jars in while I'm filling the fill them. Okay, I've got jars in the canner heating up now. My beans are ready to put in jars. So I'm going to bring you over here. Where I'm going to fill them at. Put my beans over here. Start filling jars. I'm using, I forgot to mention this a while ago. Uh, I'll be using this to scoop the beans out into the jars and then I'll use my ladle. Uh, I'll use my ladle to get the juice, the bean juice. In the pan. Okay, I've Okay, so here we go. I'll show you filling one or two jars, and then uh, then I will process them after I get them all filled. fill these about three-fourths full <coughs> because the beans will continue to expand as, as you're canning them and while they're sitting on the shelf. So that's all I want in there. A teaspoon of salt. And the liquid. 
liquid that the beans were had their second boil in. If I run out of liquid, I'll boil some water in my tea kettle. Put in the rest of them. Get up to the one inch headspace line, which is just about this uh, rim right here. Get my towel that's soaked in vinegar, wipe the rim of the jar. Okay, after you've wiped the rim of your jar, put on a clean lid, get your ring, screw it down, you only want it finger tight, and that's easy to do if you've got the jar sitting on a towel, because as soon as it starts to move, it's as tight as it needs to be. I'm going to do one more. hot water out of the jar, back into the canner, leave it in your canner because you're going to need it. <coughs> Once again, fill it up about three-fourths of the way full. Teaspoon of salt. You can leave the salt out. The salt doesn't do anything for the preservation. It's just for flavor. So if you don't want salt, you don't have to put it in there. Put the liquid in. I've been asked why I can pinto beans since they store so long when they're dry. Well, they do. That's a fact. But it also takes a long time to get them ready and cook them when you're ready for a meal. So I like to can them. We had some today. I like to open a jar and be able to just heat them up, and I've got my pinto beans when I'm ready when I'm ready for them counting all these in quarts because that makes us a good meal size. But I also can some in pints. Not today, but I do count them in pints. There. So that we can use them as a side dish or make refried beans out of them. Okay, I'll bring you back when I've got them all in the jars. I mean in the can. Well, I did have to add water, just plain hot water, <clears throat> to that jar and add some to that jar. And you can see the color difference because that's pretty clear. But by the time they're through canning, there shouldn't be very much difference between the jars. Okay, seven quarts of beans in the canner. Getting ready to put on the lid and I'll bring you back when I take them out. These process, these are quarts, they process for the same time as meat. They process 90 minutes. I have to, I use 11 pounds of pressure for my elevation. Your pressure depends on your elevation. Okay, what I'm waiting for it to do right now is vent. Uh, I'll let it vent for a full 10 minutes. This is not where it's venting, even though some steam is coming out. 
I'm waiting for it to vent out of this. It'll come out of these little holes and out from under it. This is just trying to get the steam built up where this will this little pin will pop up and lock this in place. Then the vent, the steam will start venting out here. I'll time it for 10 minutes and then I'll lock this down. Okay. Now you can see it's steaming. This has popped up. This is steaming. I set my timer for 10 minutes, and when the 10 minutes is up, I reach over here and screw this down. You can see we have no pressure on the gauge right now. We're not processing yet. Okay, the 10 minute vent is up. The way this is made, you just tighten it down. Then, I'll wait for the pressure to come up to 11 pounds. You can see right there is 10. Right past it is 11. If you're wondering what the vent is for, the venting, is to get all the air out of the canner. Because air will not carry heat to your jars the way that steam will. Steam will carry the heat, keep your jars safe. But if you leave air in the canner, you may have cool spots that you don't even know about. And it may be that your food won't be safe. Well, I'll bring you back when it's time to take these out. Okay, the pressure has dropped to zero. I'm going to let this, I've loosened the lid. I'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes and rest. Then I will take the jars out of the canner. I'm letting it sit so I can reduce the chance of siphoning. Okay, you can hear the generator running, it's getting late. But anyway, I want to show you. You open a canner, take off the lid, open it away from your face so that steam goes away from you. here. Start getting my beans out. Put them over here on this counter on a towel. Out of a draft. About an inch apart, it's fairly cool tonight, so I don't want them to cool apart. I want them to cool, cool down normally, but not too fast. This one siphoned just a little bit, but it's still boiling. They're all they all seem to be boiling, so I think they're all going to seal okay. Getting dark in here, so I know it's hard to see. because the light that's up overhead isn't showing the beans very well. But anyway, you can see they are boiling. That one, looks like it might have softened a little bit. That might be the one that was just water. I don't know. But anyway, I'll take a really good picture of them here in just a minute and add it to the end. So that's how you can beans, pinto beans, safely according to USDA guidelines, and this is the only way I do it. I do not start with dry beans. I mean, I don't put dry beans in the jars. The reason I don't is because the tested time 
for canning dry beans was tested on beans that have been rehydrated through soaking and boiling. Uh, it, there, there are no tested times for doing beans from dry. Yes, they will cook in the jars. But my question is, if it takes 90 minutes to, to process them after they're soaked and already have water on the inside, how is only 90 minutes going to work for beans that have, don't have any water on the inside? Part of that time, the processing time, is being taken up with just getting the beans full of water. And then, how much time is left to actually make them safe? I don't know. And since I don't know, I'm not going to do it. Thanks for watching.